Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Life in HD, where we invite special guests to come in and chat with us about human design in real life. And if you're new to this channel, I'm your host, Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design guide and founder of the Human Design Academy. And today I'm really, really excited because we actually have our very first mental projector coming onto the series, which I was really surprised about. Uh, you know, <laughs> why haven't we had a mental projector on so far? Um, and not just any mental projector, but one with such a warm energy, insightful energy, and who I love chatting with and listening to every time we're together. And without further ado, I'd love for all of you to meet the wonderful Ingrid, aka the Joyful Rebel. She's a 5-1 mental projector and fulfillment coach. Welcome, Ingrid. How are you? Oh, thank you so much for that warm welcome and for having me. And wow, it's an honor to be the first mental projector on your podcast. That's wow, amazing. Oh, I'm excited to hear more about you. And I mean, not that I don't know nothing mm -hmm. about you, but I'm excited for everyone else to hear more and to share <laughs> you with the world. So um, I guess for everyone that's listening, who are you, Ingrid? And what is it that you do? Oh, yeah, that's great. So we have five or six hours to talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so for this is actually a global community. I'm located in Austria, which is in the center of Europe. And not to be confused with Australia, by yes, the way. Yes, <laughs> we don't have kangaroos. <laughs> we don't hop around and it's we are heading to winter right now, not summertime. <laughs> so that we've clarified that. Um what else is necessary to need about uh, to know about me? Um I'm a very proud mom of two amazing boys. They are, by the way, um, emotional manifesting generator and a pure generator. So it's kind of interesting, our life at home. Um, yeah, I've gone through a lot of different um, jobs, let's say that. I found my first love in ecology and studied at university to reach doctor's degree and I'm still teaching at university and I found my other love with which um, is located in self-development and rather I call it now self-remembering mm. yep <laughs> I love it and yeah so as I'm someone who wants to dive deep into understanding and knowing and now I know this is kind of a superpower of myself mm -hmm. <laughs> conceptualizing and those things um, it was always quite easy to choose other topics to dive into and mm -hmm. to do it um, parallel actually so some some part of me still thinks I'm a manager, I guess. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> still believes I am able to multitask, but I'm actually not. So <laughs> yeah. So this is how I came to um, body work like shiatsu. This is how I um, dove into traditional Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and nutrition and yeah, always was very interested in how the body works and how this works together. Yeah. And yeah, so this is actually a little bit of my journey. So yeah. <laughs> and I mean, how did you come across human design? Was it because of your interest in self development mm -hmm. that you, you know, stumbled across it as one of the systems? Or did it find you during like a certain time in your life? I guess both is true. Mm -hmm. because um, three years ago, actually, I really intensely started my self-remembering journey. Mm -hmm. And I've been in several group coaching programs and came across this idea that there is um, more, more in life and more in the universe than science, actually. <laughs> admits and 
I felt very drawn to that because I felt this was a part of me that I neglected for a very long time. I have, I remember myself being very intuitive and very sensitive when I was younger. And then I just really focused on my, yeah, let's say thinking and, and mental abilities and diving into mm-hmm. life sciences like ecology, botany, um, oh, wow. those things, um, computer sciences. I was just like, okay, so I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> there is science. I can explain almost everything with science. And so I felt very drawn to the, let's say, ideas they proposed also in those in those um, groups and the coaches I met. So I'm I'm sure that that was the calling. Yeah. Like I met them on purpose. There was mm-hmm. no coincidence. And in the in one of those groups, there was a woman I connected with, and she was um studying human design actually for a certificate in Germany and I just made an appointment with her and she read my human design and that's almost two years ago Mm -hmm. (laughs) not 15 or so (laughs) and I felt like wow how can she possibly know all of that I mean we have been connected before but I mean I didn't tell her that 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 was like she was reading my life story (laughs) like okay check that box check that box and interestingly it was at a stage in my journey where I had spent I don't know six months or longer on discovering my or yeah, just really wanted to listen to my gut, mm-hmm. to, to be guided intuitively. Yeah. And everything I tried from pendulum to um, kinesiology or whatever, I always had those confusing mixed signs. It was mm-hmm. all, my, all the time I had to start with, okay, so what's my no feel like today? <laughs> what and or I did feel like this in the morning but maybe yeah. in the evening it was something different and I was like so frustrated and like okay so what's going on here and then this beautiful woman came and she said well you are a mental projector you don't have any reliable gut feeling and I was oh <laughs> okay there's nothing wrong <laughs> there is nothing wrong with me mm-hmm. I just don't have something fixed in there Mm -hmm. and and it was just this kind of okay awareness and acceptance that um that I really felt connected with in the first moment Mm -hmm. and still I did not dive into human design yeah but into the gene keys (laughs) (laughs) so it took a little while that's okay there were detours (laughs) Yay. along the way yes I felt like okay this is another so structured so um I don't know this uh strategy authority thing mm-hmm. and I was at this stage I was more like okay I want to contemplate I want to feel into it and um so at this stage I did not really know um very much about human design and um but I mean it returned yeah it, it always turn. does doesn't it <laughs> yeah if it's if it's meant then it's it meant does. to be mm-hmm. yeah and I found yeah. a few months later I found a another coach which was completely not related to all of the groups I've been before mm-hmm. and she used um human design not as a specialist but just in the background of her coaching And this was how I learned to really lean into my authority Mm -hmm. because this was not, yeah, on the first page for me. I, you know, you just hear what you're ready to hear, (laughs) even if they tell you, yeah, you need a sounding board. Then if you never heard that before, 
Oh, well, well, um, we're going to get into that. I'm going to be yeah. asking you lots of questions around that because <laughs> that seems to be, you know, a topic yeah. of confusion with a lot yeah. of mental projectors, right? Um, but, you know, uh, clearly from your journey, you've been someone that was very much connected to the mental oh, yes. part of you, right? The oh, mental yeah. aspect. Um, but was there anything else? Like, I'm sure that was not a surprise for you mm. when you discovered your <laughs> mental no. Pro- no, projector. not at all. Um, everything everything made so much sense yeah was there anything that um kind of validated more that you know you kind of felt inside but didn't have the words to describe it something you know did human design help you remember something really important about yourself yes definitely and this is not uh, really diving deeper into the chart, not um, at the at the surface level of of the type or strategy, but when I learned that most of my um, activations are in the um, no, sensory part, mm-hmm. <laughs> not the logical actually. <laughs> There are Ironically enough of enough, them yeah. also, but it's more the the sensing and that I have one particular gate activated multiple times and this is intuition. Mm-hmm. And so it's okay. So yeah, I just did not tell myself a story, but I neglected that part. And this is something to revitalize and to... Yeah, not hide from the world any longer. Mm-hmm. Learn to kind of get out of here yes. once in a while and kind of get back down. Yeah, and Maybe. also acknowledging that um, the senses are not just seeing and hearing, but they are everywhere. And the mm-hmm. whole body is your receiver, actually. Yeah. And human design helped me a lot to understand that better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I guess for us non-mental projectors, how would you describe to us how it feels to be a mental projector? Like if if you could describe it in a couple (laughs) sentences, I know that's like a big ask, but what are a few things that stand out for you? Um, Maybe I can share that it's, many phases of my life and many um, stages I felt like really disconnected from my body completely Mm -hmm. so and also felt maybe because of that the urge of um, thinking my body into health or um, I don't know slimness or (laughs) fitness and just really controlling my body instead of listening what um what it has to say because i didn't trust that Mm -hmm. i didn't believe that um um, my body would know what's good right and something else maybe and this is for for i guess for all for all types who have these defined head and ajna Mm -hmm. oh yeah (laughs) that um or maybe it's special for for the 2343 channel i'm not quite sure but this feeling of wow i mean that's so obvious something out there in the world something it's so obvious that it doesn't work and why do why don't the other people see that it's this feeling of how I see the world and how I perceive the world um, is how all the other people perceive it or Mm -hmm. should perceive it. And it's not the case. It's just (laughs) not the case. It's like that stubbornness. Oh, I, I know what you mean. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I'm Taurus as well. So (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Standing your ground and what you know, right. (laughs) I'm, I'm stubborn. Yeah. So what, I've been taught the last, I don't know, 10 years, and especially with um, diving into my human design is to cultivating this kind of openness and compassion for Mm -hmm. other people not see, not looking at the world as I look at the world. Mm -hmm. And also when I see the interest in 
others to get to know more about my, my perspective, mm. then I know that my thoughts and my concept can be highly influential. Mm -hmm. So and this is also something I learned that I do not share my thoughts with everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Waiting for that invitation. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. key, I'm sure. And this uh, is also something I learned from human design because I was somebody who just shut that down very early in her life because mm -hmm. it was very frustrating and it was very uh, feeling very resentful mm -hmm. when I was sharing, even when I was asked, but for advice and I shared and they did not just really um, acknowledge that. Um, and I learned that recognition is a big part because just someone asking does not have to be a really an invitation. Mm -hmm. So what I did early in my life was to just shut down and do not share advice in any ways, even if I yeah. was asked. And human design helped me to discern when it was actually also necessary and it would have been not fair to mm -hmm. hold back with what I think when I was invited to share. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And mental projectors have a lot to offer the world. <laughs> like, right. I love listening to mental projectors soundboard and just, you know, process the, you get to see them processing their thoughts in real time. <laughs> <laughs> and so on the topic of soundboarding, you know, a lot of people, um, I guess are kind of confused about the mm. mental projector authority, right? AKA environmental authority, yeah. AKA soundboarding, right? Mm. How would you describe your authority process? Like, what does that look like for you in terms of making a decision? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have any examples that helps you walk through it, um, I'd love to just kind of get an idea of mm -hmm. how Ingrid works. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah. Maybe I can understand <laughs> that as well. <laughs> when I talk about it. Well, first thing is that I actually really cultivated a kind of communication style when I'm not quite sure what I really think about something. And people ask me, then I say, well, okay, um, I'm a kind of talking thinker. Mm -hmm. So I don't introduce human design at that point, but I'm, 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 I'm thinking through talking. So something might come out that when I hear it, I actually can't dismiss it. But for you or the person I'm talking to, um, it could seem like this is the statement, but it's not. So this is when I'm not quite sure what I really want then I frame it like this. And I did not do that before. And it's easier now in conversations, especially with my kids, because also with them, when I'm not quite sure, I'm just talking through it mm -hmm. because there's no other way for me to get clarity. And I just tell them, okay, I just need you to listen, but don't take my word because I'm just figuring out what I think about it. <laughs> yeah. And... But for some, uh, I mean, little decisions or everyday decisions, it is, for most of them, I don't need a sounding board. I just make the decision. And if I do, uh, it's also possible to, to write about mm -hmm. it. And because in the process of writing comes the answer. Mm -hmm. It's like really like journaling, I guess. And, but it also could be that I can see it written there and know that this is wrong, that does not fit, or the decision is no. And for mm -hmm. other things, I really need some body to talk to. And that could also be, this is something I did in the morning today, actually. I have a, a group on Voxer. Um, I'm very connected to them. So they are not live with me. They were actually asleep because they are in the US in my mm -hmm. morning. <laughs> yeah. And just talking to them, opening up the conversation with, okay, um, this is my, you are my sounding board right now. They know me. And 
Actually, I know they don't have to listen to that because it was enough to have this this safe space to mm-hmm. talk into. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, it yeah. doesn't always have to be a real person in front of me, although mm-hmm. that's Helpful. that would be the best sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, what, what I'm getting is your mental authority process or your environmental authority process is like, thinking out loud, preferably with a person, if it's like something important, Mm -hmm. but not always necessary. Um, And then you mentioned like on a day-to-day, you're able to just like make these day-to-day decisions. And so how does your environment impact your ability to to easily, you know, more easily make these day-to-day decisions? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. And the answer is I really need and always needed a lot of time outdoors. Mm. I'm a very, I mean, I've been a field ecologist. I've been up in the mountains and in the woods oh, and wow. on the floor <laughs> and <laughs> really being yeah. very connected. And yeah, so this is on the one hand, a an environment um, where I feel very grounded and connected. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, this is the environment where I feel free to just process my thoughts. And I find myself with my mobile talking to the mobile, mm-hmm. <laughs> recording myself. Recording voice notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you find that that helps quite a bit in processing, you know, all that, I guess, yes. mental energy, kind of getting it out? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And Sometimes I really feel like it was just this process of talking it out. Just I don't remember what I've been talking about the last 30 minutes. And it even doesn't matter that the recording failed (laughs) because it was just necessary to to process something. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, wow. Um, And so for you, as you're... I've heard, I've heard like different things about mm-hmm. what it feels like to come to clarity as a mental projector, but like, what does it feel like for you when you're, you know, soundboarding with someone and then all of a sudden it like clicks, mm-hmm. you're like, mm-hmm. how did I not know that? Already? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was, um, thinking about that or in, and feeling into my body a couple of times, but, um, it's like, it's like a knowingness. Mm-hmm. I cannot, um, I cannot locate that feeling anywhere in my body. It's like a whole body knowingness. This mm-hmm. is right. Yeah. And in some bigger decisions, I still feel my my mind jumping in and mm-hmm. um, bringing up some fears or some um, challenges that. I now know come from the mind and come from the subconscious and yeah. So I, tr- I learned to trust in the big decisions as well. Mm-hmm. And so in making those big decisions and, and soundboarding, who are like the, the right people to soundboard with? Mm. The people I feel safe with mm-hmm. people I feel um, that they don't have the need to to give advice mm-hmm. and they know what it means not to give advice yeah. so they have to be a little bit more <laughs> reflected self-reflected and um, to know the difference between reflecting back to me and telling me what they are hearing mm-hmm. um, instead of giving me advice because this is something I feel at the minute and even if I consciously can think okay this was just advice I don't need to take it but I feel I feel it in the body I feel like this withdrawal in in the moment so I'm aware (laughs) how it can feel to get advice Mm -hmm. from a projector because from projectors it's even worse (laughs) (laughs) it's even worse to get uh unsolicited advice Mm -hmm. and so now I know that how it can feel to do that to another person oh yeah I'm married (laughs) to a projector so (laughs) at the beginning 
he actually learned from me that you don't need to give advice to everyone that is asking or, you know, that just wants to vent. I learned that from human design. So, <laughs> but yeah, definitely um, a journey. So like, you know, when you're again, trusting yourself, trusting your voice and what you're saying and talking it out loud and making these aligned decisions for yourself, what does success look like for you as a projector, as a mental projector? Mm-hmm. What does that feel like for you? How do you know that you're kind of living this signature success? That's actually very easy. This is when something I can share um, helps another person, mm. either personally or in business or in the family with the kids. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, that's actually really the bottom line. If I can, because then I know, okay, this is why I learned that. This is why I dove into that system. This is why I listened to that podcast or whatever, because now it makes sense, not for me yeah. or not only for me, but actually it just makes sense in transferring and transmitting it to another person. Mm -hmm. And a person who really can take it and make something good for their life with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it, actually. All I, the only thing else I need in my life. No, there are two things. Support, Mm -hmm. (laughs) being supported and having joy in my life. That's it. Very, very very key very right? basic mm-hmm. um and you know you're a five one and so you're the one that's always supporting others mm-hmm. right <laughs> or you know trying to save others be the I don't know if I want to use that word the savior in some Yay. cases or the <laughs> the rescuer and so oh, yeah. are there any um projections that you get of you like any common projections as a five one as a five one mental projector mm-hmm. for that matter that are like you know I guess common projections but are like not you at all or that you don't feel connected mm-hmm. to you? um maybe it's because I I'm not very much out there anymore since what happened three years ago to the world I'm um I'm working online Mm -hmm. and well there are some projections in terms of um they think that I can help with something and I could definitely do that but I don't want to yeah because it's not my focus of interest any longer Mm -hmm. um so it's outdated for me and and it would be would mean a lot of effort for me to dive into that topics again. Um, and I also, yeah, actually I I really decided against some invitations mm-hmm. because they didn't feel right for me. Yeah. But I guess that was not, I don't know if it was um, wrong protection, uh, projections or expectations from the other side, but it yeah. just... Um, turned out that it was not like a job offer it -hmm. was in the end not what they promised but something different and I was very happy to say no then you dodged a (laughs) bullet (laughs) right I can imagine this happening to you a lot in like you know your academic background or the let's say in your background with like life sciences do you get a lot of invitations to you know speak about certain topics that you're like so far removed from (laughs) yeah yeah actually those invitations come every now and then and they came back when I was an active scientist and I always felt like I'm I'm in the wrong system so Mm -hmm. the system of science not the science itself but the the system is very competitive Mm -hmm. (laughs) and no wonder I have the open wheel center yeah (laughs) and always thought that I'm lacking willpower 
So mm -hmm. I can connect it back to human design as well. And I'm really, I don't have any competitive ambition. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, even in sports, I didn't have any of those. And so this was not my world. And I was really, um, in my first years, I was in a very supportive environment mm -hmm. where I guess the people I worked with, they really um, acknowledged my talents, which mm -hmm. were not in um, bringing in the founding and um, writing the thesis or whatever but yeah. to have the people connected or to have yeah this kind of practical problem solution thing <laughs> yeah so what would you say to someone that struggles to like decline invitations you know I feel like there's a lot of mm. especially when we're very much in our heads we're being yeah. very logical it's like well, you should do this because mm. it's a good opportunity because mm. let's say, for example, it pays well, or, mm -hmm. you know, this is something that other people would have dreamed of doing. Like, how mm. do you, how have you learned to feel comfortable with saying no to invitations or even like requests and stuff like that? Um, being a, a fifth line, right. That are yeah. just not in alignment with you. How do you get comfortable with that? The very honest answer is uh, it's not comfortable at mm -hmm. all, <laughs> but I learned to stay comfortable in the discomfort. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm telling myself then is a no to an opportunity or to another person is a yes to yourself. Yes. Very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. And so the subconscious always comes up with some kind of fears because as you were saying, like this is well paid and this could be, I don't know, um, the opportunity to get to other people. And this could be right in some um in some aspects, but if it's if it feels like restricting or it feels like whoa, mm -hmm. and the whole body is crying and no. <laughs> And this can also happen to mental projectors, but they, yeah. tr I don't know, I can just speak for myself, tend to ignore that mm -hmm. um, or do not trust in, in that. So there is another thing I learned from my very best friend for making these um, business decisions was like, there are three aspects you have to uh, think about um, and either it's three of them positive or just two. But if it's just one, then it's a no, definitely. So one is they pay very well. So mm -hmm. money aspect. The one is um, it's a lot of fun and you really want to do that work. And the third is you can learn a lot there. Mm -hmm. So minimum of two of them has to be fulfilled to, to be a yes Mm -hmm. And what I would add right now is, and for other mental projectors, really talk it through with your um, trusted people mm -hmm. and being in the right environment. So not yeah. sitting at the train station, for right? example, <laughs> if you don't feel very comfortable there, then you will never come to, to the right decision there. But mm -hmm. when it's just one of those, you don't even need to soundboard because it's just no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and there will and and missing this opportunity will actually open the doors for even better things there to we come. Go. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like that what you were saying, it's like your body's crying. Yeah. <laughs> telling you like no that feeling can get so strong mm -hmm. and it's just not even worth it at yeah. that point, no matter how much they pay, no matter how much, you know, um, learning you can get from this experience. If yeah. it's not fun or fulfilling for you, you're going to feel yeah. it. <laughs> and then it just makes that journey or like, you know, let's say you do it. It makes that experience just, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to describe it, but like heavy, I think that's, mm -hmm a word yeah. I would use. Um, Definitely. Bitter, resentful, <laughs> resentment. Yeah. 
it's like why am i here um oh no it wasn't a question it wasn't a an actual question (laughs) um okay anyways And so I know that you're also a fulfillment coach. And so how do you integrate human design in your work? Um, And is there anything like any certain types of people that you typically work Mm -hmm. with or that you guide? So actually human design became since I gone through your certification program. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing, really. And it gave me a lot of tools that I, I would not have, um, gotten if if I didn't choose you Mm. um it became my very my very first thing to go when it comes to awareness building Mm -hmm. and to um acceptance because I really think this is the first step in each change transformation story and journey to to be aware of what's going on and getting to know the the own hum, um, human design, the personal human design, and getting a really deep reading on that helps people to, to come to those ahas like I did. Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, so this is normal. It's okay to be that way. It's actually written in here. It's like... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's it's not in terms of because some people might tend to um, use that as an excuse to not change something that's not in alignment and not working or um, making um, being the cause of challenges in relationships or something. But it just opens the eyes for, OK, this is a topic in my journey and. I am the one and actually I'm the only one to perceive it differently Mm -hmm. and to act on it differently or to not act on it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and use it in my and everybody else's favor. Mm -hmm. And this is so beautiful about human design because you have the shadow and you have the gift Yeah, and you are stuck in neither. So you can, (laughs) and it's your choice. Or it's everybody, everybody's own choice. And this is where my knowledge about the subconscious and how um, actually the thought process and the emotions work together mm-hmm. comes into play. So then I can have the tools to actually shift that. Yeah. Because um, just knowing, okay, it's like this it doesn't transform you. Yeah. and neither me or anybody yeah but to really experience and experiment even if you're not a, th- a line three or not a line six yeah <laughs> it's just really lived experience that transforms mm-hmm. the shadow into the gift absolutely yeah. right so human design is again I-, I agree with you it's a great awareness tool and it's so insightful, so validating. Um, yeah. But it's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Just the beginning. Everything else, like you said, it's, you have to live it. You have to put it into action. And that's where you really get to experience that that transformation. Um, and is there anything that you're offering right now that help people yeah. through this transformation? Yeah. So actually, um I'm available for um, monthly or three month packages. So there's really my, um, now let's frame it differently. I really love to, to guide people on their journey. And as we were just talking about human design, it's just the beginning or you can um, use it along the way, Mm -hmm. but it's actually this, experiment and it just takes time it's a process Mm -hmm. it's a process and many people think okay I just need to know my human design and then everything is well and they're quite surprised when I tell them oh no it takes some (laughs) inner work (laughs) Mm -hmm. and actually they are the one to do the work 
because um, you can just do your own inner work for yourself. And but and I really believe that through what I can um, offer, it it becomes easier because mm -hmm. there is this safe space. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I really believe that we all need this safe space to to try something new, and. And transformation is always trying something new and mm -hmm. trying to be comfortable in the discomfort yeah. <laughs> is, is easier when you know you, you can fall back to somebody and somebody is available. So, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And very soon I will open up for a, uh, for a group coaching program. Again, I call it the expedition. <laughs> I love it. Oh, wow. It's a joy. It's a journey. journey. It's, yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of like you, when you just explained to me, you'd go on these, like the environmental kind of trips. Yay. <laughs> back in Yay. Exactly. That that's it. That's what, what I have in the back of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> that, that's great. Well, yeah. So the expedition, the expedition, mm -hmm. the expedition 3.0 will I, I don't have the date fixed because I want to keep it flexible, especially in the season when mm -hmm. Christmas is coming up and, oh gosh. but it will be definitely coming up. So, and there's always, so for somebody who's interested in human design, I all, because I'm a hypnotist, a mm -hmm. certified hypnotist, oh, cool. yeah. um, I prepared type specific meditations for deepening the connection with your human design type that's incredible I oof. yeah yeah <laughs> and these are very affordable so they can just download it on my on my website for for very little money and so I have something for for every, for every wallet one. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, well, I will leave all of Ingrid's information in the description. Oh, so um, if you want to reach out to her or if you want to experience one of her meditations, I had the the opportunity <laughs> to hear your generator meditation as well. Oh, it was very cool. lovely. So, so did it turn you into a generator? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh. But still, like Ingrid is very gifted, very, you know, warm and, um, you know, as a guide, it's just absolutely beneficial to have someone be there to hold and support your transformation, to help you facilitate your transformation, really. Um, and so for anyone, I guess, any mental projectors that are starting off their journey mm. in you know, their deconditioning process, or maybe they're just getting into their own like self-development. Do you have any words of advice for them on, you know, what to hone in on, what to, where to even start? Where to even start? Not, not just only mental projectors, but I guess everybody who feels like they have to think their way through life mm -hmm. and, and really f feel stuck every now and then, because that's the secret. You cannot think your way through life. It's just not possible. <laughs> so the hint is drop back into your body whenever you can. And the easiest way to do that is breathing. Mm -hmm. That's just, I mean, it's as simple as this, you know, simplicity is my life's work. <laughs> um, and in human design and jinkies so mm -hmm. we don't believe it because it's so simple but this is the way to to connect deep belly breathing and talking it out <laughs> drawing away from the environment drawing yeah. away from the own head and dropping into the belly and just give yourself the gift of being in your body and if it's just for a minute each day, it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Beautiful. <laughs> and I guess to wrap things up for today, um, you know, I always like to ask what your favorite quote or mantra is. So is there one that you'd like to share with us today? Oh my gosh. 
there are so many but um yeah on my on my calendar right now I have like what you think today you will experience tomorrow it's mm -hmm. like a little self-fulfilling so when you think thing, yeah <laughs> it's possible then it mm. is possible and if you don't think it's for you then it's not for you yeah, yeah. that one hits deep I, I, some, I forget like where I was listening to something but anyways they're talking about like self-fulfilling prophecies and how yes. you know everything that we think or that we say mm -hmm. it's true or you know makes itself true <laughs> in some way <laughs> so um yeah no that definitely is something that we all can think about and mm. also what you were you know when you were talking about mental protectors learning to let go of what all those thoughts are trying to force you to do or not force you to do but influence you to do yeah I know that you don't have to respond every time <laughs> definitely you don't have to take your thoughts too seriously <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ingrid, it was so, so nice having you here today. I'm Thank so you so much for sharing. Thank you yeah. so much for inviting me. And um, it was so wonderful, amazing and lovely to speak to you. And thank you for having me. That, that was great. Oh, thank you. <laughs>